Hello, in this video we'll be talking about AP Chemistry's topic 1.1, moles and molar mass. So the reason that the mole concept is so important in chemistry is because we cannot see atoms. And so when we talk about chemical reactions or we talk about samples of substances and we want to know how many uh, representative particles, and by representative particles I either mean atoms or I mean molecules or formula units. Um, and just a reminder, atoms have to do with elements. Those are the representative particles of elements. Molecules are for uh, molecular compounds. And, um, well, that's pretty bad. And formula units are for ionic compounds. So these are simply the representative units, the smallest particles of the substance uh, that has the properties of that substance. So elements are made out of atoms, molecular compounds have molecules, and ionic compounds have formal units. So the molar mass, uh, mole concept is just a way of us relating how many of the representative particles are in a sample. And um, since we can't count them, we need some way to do that, and usually that's by mass. So we're going to talk about how moles are related to number of particles and then how also moles are related to the grams of a substance. So the mole was defined as 12 grams of the isotope carbon-12. If you measure out 12 grams of the isotope, pure isotope of carbon-12, it turns out that that sample has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And so this is where we get the number 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. This number is called Avogadro's number. And it is the definition of one mole of a substance. So one mole of any substance, doesn't matter what the substance is, has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd representative particles and again, representative particles just means either atoms for elements, molecules for molecular compounds, or formula units for ionic compounds. So one mole, by definition, contains this many particles. Now this wouldn't be all that helpful because we can't measure moles. There's no such thing as a, as a balance that measure moles. And we can't count particles because we don't have a way of doing that easily. So there's got to be some other relationship with the mole and that's where the 12 grams of carbon-12 comes in. Uh, scientists related the average mass of the element in AMU to the grams of the substance. And so this number all of a sudden has a correlation between the atomic mass in AMU and the molar mass in grams per mole. So for carbon, the average atomic mass is 12.01 AMU. The molar mass of carbon, uh, carbon is 12.01 grams per mole. And that was because of this very clever definition of taking 12 grams and relating it to the 12 AMU of the, the molar mass, I mean of the atomic mass or mass number. So whatever number you see on the periodic table for the average atomic mass, that also turns out to be the mass uh, of one mole of that substance. So in this case, with carbon, 12.01 AMU for the average atomic mass, 12.01 grams per mole for the molar mass. And again, molar mass is the mass of one mole of a substance. So we are going to do a couple of problems and just see how uh, we can use this. So again, a couple of reminders, just conversion factors. One mole of a substance is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Uh, representative particles. That's one very important conversion factor. And then our second important conversion factor is one mole equals the molar mass in grams of that substance. Uh, of that substance. And so now we can convert grams to moles, we can convert moles to particles, and we are able to do um, a lot of useful things with that. So let's take a look and, and just practice a, a problem real quick. Let's say that we have 38.2 grams of carbon, and we want to know how many uh, atoms of carbon this is, of carbon that is. 
Okay, so we cannot convert grams directly to particles, atoms. We can't go directly from grams to atoms. But with the mole concept, using the molar mass, we can go from grams to moles. And then once we've converted to moles, so we can convert grams to moles. And then once we convert from to moles, we can convert moles to atoms using Avogadro's number. So we're going to use dimensional analysis to do this. Let's start with our given, which is 38.2 grams of carbon. The molar mass of carbon is 12.01 grams for every one mole. And again, that's for carbon. Every other substance has a different molar mass. So a mole would be a different mass. But for carbon, it's 12.01 grams. And then our grams cancel. We're left with moles of carbon. So now we can go from moles to atoms by using Avogadro's number. One mole of carbon is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. And so moles cancel. We're left with atoms, and that's what we were solving for. So if we multiply across the top and divide by the bottom, you will find that this is 1.91 times 10 to the 24th atoms of carbon. And that's it. So the mole concept allows us to relate something we can measure directly, grams, to something we can't measure directly, atoms. And that in chemistry is a critical, critical concept. So let's try another one, but this time let's apply it. Let's see why this, this matters. Um, let's use a balanced equation and uh, see a reaction. Hydrogen reacts with oxygen to produce water. Now, if you'll notice, there's two hydrogen atoms here and two hydrogen atoms here, but one, two oxygen atoms on the left and only one oxygen atom on the right. So to balance this, we need coefficients of two and two. So the mole ratio, the particle ratio, how these atoms react with one another is that two molecules of hydrogen will react with one molecule of oxygen to produce two molecules of water. So it's a particle relationship that we need to understand in order to understand this reaction, that these react on a two particle to one particle to two particle ratio. If you scale that up, that means this is a two mole uh, of hydrogen reacts with one mole of oxygen to produce two moles of, uh, of water. And again, we can't measure moles, but what we can measure is mass. And so let's go ahead and see a problem of how this applies and why the mole concept, again, is so important. Let's say that we have a, uh, we need to, we want to make um, 24.0 grams of water. And we want to know how many grams of oxygen I'm going to need in order to do that. So again, we can measure grams very easily. I can measure grams of oxygen very easily. But the relationship in the balanced equation is a mole relationship. One mole of oxygen produces two moles of water. So in order to do this, we are going to have to convert grams to moles so that we can find the mole relationship between these two substances. And then once we have that mole relationship, we'll have to convert back to grams of oxygen. So let's see how we're going to do it. So let's start with our given, 24 grams of water. Uh, we're going to convert that to moles because we need to know how many moles of water there is so we can use this balanced equation molar relationship. So if you look on the periodic table, 18.02 grams of water is one mole of water. That's using the molar mass. Two hydrogens plus one oxygen is 18.02 grams. So grams of water cancel, and we now have moles of water. But we want to know how many uh, grams of oxygen are needed to react. So we're going to look at the mole relationship here. Two moles of water come from one mole of oxygen. So two moles of water come from one mole of oxygen reacting. So moles of water cancel, and we have moles of oxygen now. So this relationship, moles to moles, that's the part we can't see. And we're using what we can see, grams, to figure out that relationship. And then last but not least, the problem's asking for grams of oxygen, not moles of oxygen. So we need to convert back from moles to grams. So one mole of oxygen gas is 32.0 grams of oxygen gas. So now we've got our whole entire a relationship because moles of oxygen cancel, 
and we're left with grams of oxygen, which is what we're trying to solve for. So now we're going to multiply across the numerator. So 24 times 1 times 1 times 32 and divide by the denominator, 18.02, and divide by 2 and divide by 1. And when you do that, you get an answer of 21.3 grams of oxygen gas. And so now we know if we measure out 21.3 grams of oxygen gas, I am capable of producing 24.0 grams of water. And so the molar relationship in the balanced equation allows us to relate something we can't see to something we can't see. And that is the power of the molar concept. And as a last reminder, molar mass which is often abbreviated with a capital M, molar mass is equal to the mass of a substance divided by the moles of that substance. In other words, if you measure out a certain mass of a substance, how many moles will that, uh, will that, sub that mass contain? So for instance, if we had um, an unknown substance and we measured out the mass of that unknown substance to be, uh, let's say, 28 Point zero two grams. And we did an experiment and determined that the moles of that uh, 28.02 grams was 2.00 moles. So the unknown substance was 28.02 grams, but that 28.02 grams contained two moles. With the mass and the moles, we can figure out the molar mass of the unknown substance. The mass of the substance was 28.02 grams. The mold of the substance was 2.0 moles, oops, moles, and 28.02 divided by 2 is 14.01 grams per mole. So by using this equation and an experimental technique of solving for moles and solving for mass, we can determine the unknown molar mass of a substance. So that's a very useful technique that we've done in class quite a few times. Uh, if you have questions about that, let me know.